scenes like this are common in the capital of Bujumbura. <laughs> Families, mostly from the opposition, have to cope with daily attacks and the killing of their loved ones. More than 400 people have been killed in the escalating violence, and some of those who survived have been arrested by security agents. This is scary because the longer it lasts, the more you have the possibility of having an entrenched conflict where resources are becoming more and more matched. The army, we are not quite sure the extent to which it remains a united force, but we know that there's been a lot of reshuffling of key posts in the military. The country was thrown into political crisis in April when President Pierre Nkurunziza declared his intention to run for a third term. He survived a military coup in May and has consolidated his grip on power despite opposition protests. Armed men staged coordinated attacks on military barracks in November and killed nearly 90 people. The time for piecemeal responses and fiddling around the edges is over. The situation in Burundi demands a robust, decisive response from the international community. The UN estimates that since the violence began, more than 200,000 people have fled to neighboring countries. The Burundian government has rejected a plan by the African Union to send 5,000 peacekeepers to protect civilians. Rebel groups claim they have closed in on toppling President Nkuruziza. The most realistic option for peace in the country now is dialogue. We are not uh, denying the need for dialogue. We are just simply saying that offenses committed need to be prosecuted. Observers will be keenly watching the talks, hoping it will mark the beginning of peace process in Burundi. Fidelis Mba, TRT World.